Hello and welcome back to another Plamo review. Today we're taking a look at the Mechanical Getter 1. Alright, and starting off, as always, with the articulation. The head is on a ball joint. Can only look about that far either way because the neck is pretty deep. However, there is also a hinge down at the base for pretty good front to back movement. Shoulders on a forward hinge, as well as a rotation. Not crazy articulation there, but it gets the job done. Comes out just below 90. You could probably get it a little bit further, but I don't want to damage the paint, which we'll get into shortly. Rotation at the bicep does come off a little bit easy. There's a bend at the elbow for just under 90 degrees, though the there's a weird joint thing going on in here that if you shift it up, you can get a little bit more, though it does look a little bit weird. Basically, there's a hinge here and then there's another hinge here and there's a little L bracket attaching it so it can shift up which is again just a weird design for that joint and the hands as always are on ball joints very large ball joints then there's two ball joints in the chest which are both anchored to this middle piece so you get the movement up here then you get a fairly tight one down here both of which can rotate somewhat, so you can get a decent amount of torso rotation, though it's not crazy. The legs are on universal, mostly, joints, so you can get uh, almost 90 degrees out. This being rubber helps a lot. And pretty good splits, to be honest. No thigh swivel, which this desperately needs. There is a rotation at the knee, however. Then a knee bend, which again has the same weird jointing thing that the elbow has, so you can get just under 90 degrees there. And the feet are on pretty decent ball joints. So the articulation is not that much better than one of the old Machinders, a uh, Shogun Warriors. You may be more familiar with them with that name. Not great, but uh, I mean it still gets the job done. Now moving on to accessories, let's start off as always with the sticker sheet and by extension color correction. We're gonna be here a while. Um, eyes, face, bits, and red for the legs. All right, now that we have that out of the way, we're gonna be here a while. Okay, let's just get it out of the way. Uh, everything aside from these two pieces is top coated because there's so much paint on this thing. Okay, the white is color separated. You don't have to paint that. The red doesn't match because uh, the shoulders, this chest piece, all of the hands and the bottoms of the feet are all this, as you can clearly see, off red rubber. And so if you want it to color match, you have to paint all of the red. I mean, you have to paint the red on the legs unless you want to use the stickers. Oh, by the way, the color on the stickers doesn't match either the rubber or the plastic, so you'll have three different reds on this thing. And speaking of the red, the uh, the rings on the knees here, I just, I, I like the manga getter colors a little bit more, so I, I, you know, I made this a bit of a brighter green and added the rings. I didn't add them on the hips because of how this is designed, it wouldn't look right, but I at least got the knees in. But aside from all of that, uh, the sides of the chest here, uh, this is all one piece, so the white on that needs to be painted. Uh, the art on the front of the box has that white. Every promotional image just leaves it red. It's supposed to be white. All of the silver parts are white plastic. I just used uh, an enamel chrome and that gave it a pretty nice silver. But yeah, you do have to paint that. Obviously the eyes need to be painted. I did silver with a translucent yellow over it just you don't have to do that you could use a flat yellow and it would look fine and the uh, cockpit windows on the chest need to be painted and we're not done yet because the joints on all of the hands need to be painted I just noticed that there's a little bit missing on this knuckle thankfully I'm not going to be posing it with these fists anyway but uh, that's that's annoying I might have to go back and fix that there is one final thing that needs paint but we can talk about that when we get into the proper accessories and let's do that now you get three sets of hands closed fists as you've been seeing two open uh grippy i guess hands they're, they're dynamic hands and you get two holding hands and 
these are holding the Getter Tomahawks, and uh, as you can tell by that silver, blades need to be painted. Now I will say, these are actually held fairly decently because of those rubber hands, it has a decent grip on them. And before we wrap up uh, talking about paint, the rubber, uh, if you haven't built a kit with rubber before, the, the nubs are particularly bad. Uh, I cut the parts straight off the runner with a knife, as close to the part as possible, which is how you're supposed to do it, because it reduces the amount of nub. And uh, you might be able to see the one here, but you'll definitely be able to see the ones on the sides of the feet, because these nubs are particularly bad. You can also see them on the back of the shoulders, though thankfully not as badly. I can kind of understand why they included the rubber parts, but I, I don't I don't really like that they did. It doesn't really add any extra articulation aside from the hips, which was a different runner anyway, so it feels a little unnecessary. You do get the uh, cape. I'm a big Getter fan. I cannot for the life of me remember the official name for the little cape, but as you can see from the little clasp here, if, if it's in boat, you can you can see it. Uh, this just goes up into that little slot there, clips in, onto the inner frame, and doesn't look amazing, but it's not in the way. Oh, and yeah, speaking of the inner frame, there is uh, one leftover piece, and that is a spare screw. It uh, uses two screws to hold the chest ball joint things in place so that it's firm and does the same thing for the shoulders and the hips. And you, different screws, but you get one of the shoulder slash hip screws as a spare. It's nice that this is included, but I don't really understand why. I triple checked the instructions, I don't think I missed a screw anywhere. And as for a quick size comparison, Getter 1 is pretty big. It's around the size of the high grade Sidebuster or New Gundam. So to wrap this review up, um, I like the kit, but it was a lot of work getting it this good, and even then it's it's only okay. <laughs> Though as the only Getter 1 kit, uh, passable, it's, it's weird, I, I like the kit, but I don't but I don't think it's great or anything. I will give them mad credit for basically having no seams on this thing, especially given that this came out over 20 years ago. The engineering's nice, the sculpting is pretty much exactly on point for Toy Getter, though, again, I'm more of a manga Getter guy. While there are better Getter ones to get, for the price and the novelty, I do like it. Just know that you're really getting into a lot of work if you do get this. A straight build would not look anywhere near this good. Anyway, that's all for this review. Be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Helps a lot. Subscribe and hit the bell for future reviews. Go follow me on Twitter for updates. And consider supporting me on Patreon so I can keep making reviews just like this one. And as always, until next time, happy building.